could drive a crane or swing upside down from a pole, I'd be quids in. Other than that, Weatherfield's got a big fat nothing to offer me. You don't need a new job. Oh, why, babe? You're going to keep me in the manner to which I'm accustomed. I don't need to. Carla's back today. She shall play the pipes of peace between you and Peter, then all will be well with the world. Well, underworld. Well, it's Carla I've got the beef with. Well, it's Peter who pinched your job. No, she gave it to him, bit by bit, till there was nothing left except filing and fig rolls. Listen, as far as I'm concerned, they can both stuff the job. Let's see how they manage without me. You've, you've walked out of Underworld? Turn on the yellow card. Uh, red card, actually, darling. And yes, Ryan, I have. I've left for good. Without another job to go to? It's a bit risky in, in this climate. No, no, not risky at all, darling, because I happen to be a highly employable woman. Bye. Mwah. Job centre. That didn't take very long. Thought you'd be there for ages. So, they're giving you a long list of interviews then, highly employable woman. Shall? <sighs> Steve, it was horrendous. I don't know who I was kidding. I stood next to this kid not much older than Ryan, and we're both reading the spec for this interior design firm. I mean, it wasn't even a proper PA role, it was just admin. Anyway, it turns out she had a degree in textiles. I haven't even got a maths GCSE. Ugh, yeah, but you've got experience, people skills, interior design. No one can plump a cushion like you, love. Plus, you look great, you sound great. Voices like liquid honey down that telephone, you're an asset. No, Steve, I'm a dinosaur. Underqualified, over the hill, totally unrealistic. And you are totally not interested. Uh, no, look, what's happening over here? But you need Underworld as much as Underworld needs you. It is mad to let you go. It's gonna be firefighting, no Carla, no you. The morning after he's bagged a big order. Yeah, so why is he not hammering at my door then? Sorry, did I say you left the uh, factory? Artistic differences. Easily sorted. Well, Carla says she values me and everything she does screams the opposite and three's a crowd, isn't it, so... Oh, I'm sorry. There's only so long you can paper over the cracks, isn't there? So, um, why did you decide to sell? Sorry, I know that's a stupid question, but you love this pub. Well, I did. I can't stay here. I could blitz this place from top to bottom, but I'd still see Carl everywhere I went. I still feel folk looking at me, thinking she must have known. Oh, sorry. And they've no idea how long the sale will take. A couple of months. Till then, I'm trapped here. Well, surrounded by people who care, though, eh? Hey, you don't fancy being trapped here with me, do you? I could offer you a couple of shifts. If that's not too insulting. Well, why would that be insulting? Well, aren't you worried, you know, about the career ladder? No pressure. No fighting, no shoulder pads. Uh, and all the hot pot you can eat. Yeah, go on, why not? Be nice to work for somebody who says what they mean and means what they say. Well, that's me. <laughs> How did I? Oh, cheers, Steve. You're a gent. Uh, glad I got you on your own. That sounds ominous. I, I, um, I know that Peter's your fella, but Michelle's family too, so could you talk some sense into her, please? What, like, if you want to make your hair curl, eat your crusts? No, like, make it up with Peter and get back behind that desk where you belong. She's accepted a job off Stella, can you believe that? Hang on, rewind. Michelle's actually left the factory. Has Peter not told you? No, he has not. Is it serious? Well, his handbag's at dawn. Don't say I told you. Names will be changed to protect the innocent. And Carla! Oh, don't worry, Steve, I'll sort it. Like, I have to sort everything. I don't need to show you the ropes. Hmm. I reckon I could run this place with my eyes closed. Uh, don't try it not to be bored me pint. <laughs> Should not be stopping, you know, the way Peter was talking mm. today. Oh, missing me, is he? <laughs> he's not coping. Straight up. He got quite misty out. <laughs> oh, he's getting soft in his old age. <laughs> oh, well, I won't bother you making up a tip jar if you're only passing through. <laughs> See you in a bit. See you. Uh, so it's true, then. <clears throat> yes, folks, what can I get you? Michelle, you do not have to do this. Hey, a girl's got to eat. 
Look, I'm sure we can find a way around whatever issues you've got with him and he's got with you. Oh, now, come on, let's face it. The problem was with you and me. Hey? You should have been honest with me from the start. You should have told me that you wanted Peter as your right hand man. No, we, we were all just feeling away. I didn't know how good he'd turn out to be, did I? Oh, I see. So how good I was didn't matter. I was just there to make up the numbers and make the coffee. That's not true. Carla's got massive respect for you. Massive respect. Well, it doesn't really matter anymore because I would rather work where I'm appreciated. In a bar. In a bar. You're wasted. No, actually, I'm valued by the clients and the boss. It means I don't have to cosy up to buyers or laugh at his jokes and manage your moods. Oh, and I don't have to take it home with me. Michelle, the girls are going to string me up if I let you go. I mean it, you're the heart and soul of that factory. Oh, you're saying this now, but you failed to mention it before. Well, I didn't think it needed saying. OK, which is... which is my mistake, which wouldn't be repeated, but... Oh, come on, Michelle, please. What can I do to prove how much I need you? Do you need me to spell it out for you? Perhaps you'd like me to write you a PowerPoint. OK, Tina, what's the most expensive bottle of champagne I can get? Um, 84 quid. Well, at least have a drink on us for now, so I can think of something better. Champagne? Are you joking? Do you know what? If you'd said you might rethink my role, or, or maybe give me some more responsibility, or even less, but some more money, anything that showed more than a nanosecond's thought, but a scabby bottle of champagne! Come on, if you're wasting your time. No, this needs sorting. There's no talking to her when she's like this. I'm not having a think, I don't care. It's a bit late for that. We built that business together, right? All through the time with Frank, after Frank, you were there for me. And through Liam and Paul. I've always been there for you, Carla. Right back to when we were kids. Do you have any idea how much it hurt me when I realised where I rank in the pecking order? Hey, you were like a sister to me. Then along comes Rob, starts whining in your ear. And I'm just pushed to the sidelines, aren't I? Even though I warned you that he was a thief and a liar. And then along comes Peter and, oh, say him again. He doesn't even like the job, he's just a nodding dog. And then you throw your cash in your car and you and you fancy designer suits at him. He's nodding all the way to the bank, isn't he? And your bed. Now, just No, it's minute. always been fellas first with you, Carla, aren't it, eh? And I'm just left sitting on the subs bench. Oh, what do you want, blood? Come on, Michelle, I've apologised. I practically begged, haven't I? So put your violin away and let's talk straight. Just forget it. Right, cos I'm done. I'm done with Underworld. I'm done with you. We should buy it. And I can sack Michelle. <laughs> yeah. That's on me. Put an IOU in the till. Oh, cheers, you're an angel. Well, especially after that viper's nest. Mm. How's your blood pressure? Mm. I mean, champagne. I quit on principle and with damn good reason. She tries to win me round with a bottle of champagne. Fair dues. It was the best bottle in the house. Oh, well, I am touched. You know, look on the bright side, okay? You work in here, it's a laugh. Yeah? And fingers crossed, someone nice will buy it. Hmm. Well, knowing my luck, Carla will probably branch out. Maybe she'll put Peter in here. <laughs> mm. She asked you about, yeah, rolled out the red carpet. Oh, yeah, she pretended to be all gutted. Then she tried to fob me off with a bottle of top dollar champagne, and no, I'm not joking. Yep, you just missed him. Well, I thought she'd talk you out of it. They supposed to be grovelling and begging. Oh, no, I have served my purpose, Steve. Boyfie's in the cockpit now, isn't he? Well, they'll be together 24 7. It's got disaster written all over it. Mm. Uh, not necessarily. It depends on the couple. Well, I would like to be the bigger person and wish them all the best. Fingers crossed to be bankrupt by Christmas. What can I get you, love? Half a lager, please. She was this close to bawling her eyes out. Well, not surprised being kicked in the teeth by Peter's one thing, but Carla. I know you're talking about me. We're not, actually. Yeah, he always throws an actually in when he's lying. He needs to be a good boyfriend. Yeah. Could you be more specific? Wait. She needs a confidence boost. Mmm. Again, more specific. You need to cheer it up, make it feel valued. Right. Well, tell me what it is and I'll do it or buy it. Just be more specific. Pathetic. I know exactly what she'll be doing now. I'm thinking about the shrubs. She'll be rewriting history. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind making the odd coffee. 
He's been replaced by an elky clown that... Chuck, you know that is unbelievable. Go into town, don't put the mortis on. Ryan. Yeah, so much for being skint. I know, they're very resourceful at that age. He's 21 and going nowhere, slowly. I mean, look at Tina. Yeah, she's not much older than him, is she? And look at the difference in attitude. Well, he's a male of the species. It'd take a lot longer to mature. Mm. And what if he ends up like me, eh? Well, a bit neurotic with more shoes and scents. I mean, my career is in tatters. And look at me. I'm right back where I started, aren't I? Pulling pints, lining somebody else's pockets. Hey, you flew in your own right. Mm. No, I'm bottom of the food chain, me, Steve. Yeah, I'll be 40 before you know it. Hardly. 40 years old before you can say, pint, please, love. Hiya. Hiya. How you doing? A lot better since I decided to sell up. I'll do everything I can to get the new owners to keep you on. Don't worry. I'm a big girl. Hmm. You've found a buyer already, have you? Oh, I wish. There are boozers closing every week. The market's even more depressed than I am. Ah, see? You cracked a funny. Yeah, well... Like Oprah used to say, fake it till you feel it. <laughs> Anything happening? Uh, yeah, Michelle's on a break. We need more tonic by Monday and we're running low on cheese and onion. Right, OK. What's the um, asking price? You know, just if uh, I think of anyone. 150, but negotiable. Highly negotiable. Right. Shall I uh, keep my ear to the ground? <laughs> Can I have a word? Of course. Two more to go. Ah, oh, bad time. No, I've had worse. Come on, sit yourself down. I'm all ears. I want to buy the pub. Really? Really, O'Reilly. Oh, that's the best news I've had in ages. Well, ever. It might take me a while to raise the money, but I'm good for it. Yeah, I'm sure. How long do you think? Um, well, what, say, a couple of weeks to raise the mortgage and then complete, what, six to eight? So, a couple of months. Hmm. Will you take it off the market? Mm -hmm. How do I know you won't change your mind? I won't. I want to surprise Michelle. Oh, really? We were up here. I'm sorry. Oh, don't be. You are the answer to my prayers. <laughs> 